This is a premeditated attack. Vladimir Putin has been planning this for months, as I've been, we've been saying all along. Putin is the aggressor. Putin chose this war. And now he and his country will bear the consequences. Today, I'm authorizing additional strong sanctions and new limitations on what can be exported to Russia. We will limit Russia's ability to do business in dollars, euros, pounds, and yen to be part of the global economy. We'll limit their ability to do that. Some of the most powerful impacts our actions will come over time as we squeeze Russians' access to finances and technology for strategic sectors of its economy and degrade its industrial capacity for years to come. My administration is using the tools, every tool at its disposal, to protect American families and businesses from rising prices at the gas pump. We've been coordinating with major oil-producing and consuming countries toward our common interest to secure global energy supplies. We are actively working with countries around the world to elevate collective release from the strategic petroleum reserves of major energy-consuming countries. And the United States will release additional barrels of oil as conditions warrant. I know this is hard and that Americans are already hurting. I will do everything in my power to limit the pain the American people are feeling at the gas pump. This is critical to me. But this aggression cannot go unanswered. If it did, the consequences for America would be much worse. America stands up to bullies. We stand up for freedom. This is who we are acts of mass civil, mass civil disobedience and strategic dead ends. The next few weeks and months, we hard on the people of Ukraine. Putin has unleashed a great pain on them. The entire world sees clearly what Putin and his Kremlin, and, and his Kremlin allies are really all about. Putin's actions betray his sinister vision for the future of our world, one where nations take what they want by force. Putin's aggression against Ukraine will end up costing Russia dearly, economically and strategically. We will make sure of that. Putin will be a pariah on the international stage. God bless the people of a free and democratic Ukraine. May God protect our troops. Mr. President. Mr. President. Mr. President. Associated Press, Zeke. Uh, speak with President Putin at this point, and what interactions have you had with the Russian government? I heard the first part. Do I have any plans to speak with Putin at this point, and what? What communications have you had with the Kremlin as far as uh, military operations in Ukraine and making sure this does not spiral into a larger conflict? Well, it's a large conflict already. The way we're going to ensure it's not going to spiral to a larger conflict is by providing all the forces needed in the Eastern European nations that are members of NATO. NATO is more united than it's ever been. And I have no plans to talk with Putin. Uh, Wall Street Journal, Tarina. Mr. President, you didn't mention SWIFT in your sanctions that you announced. Is there a reason why the U.S. Uh, isn't doing that? Is there a disagreement among allies um, regarding SWIFT and whether uh, Russia should be allowed to be a part of it? The sanctions that we have proposed on all their banks have of equal consequence, maybe more consequence than SWIFT, number one. Number two, uh, it is always an option, but right now that's not the position that the rest of uh, Europe wishes to take. Um, uh, Cecilia Ve Ve Vega, ABC. Sir, sanctions clearly have not been enough to deter Vladimir Putin to this point. What is going to stop him how and when does this end, and do you see him trying to go beyond Ukraine? And a second question I'll just give to you now. This statement that he gave last night, will, that the, West, the threat that he gave, the West will face consequences greater than any you have faced in history. Is he threatening a nuclear strike? I have no idea what he's threatening. I know what he has done, number one. And number two, no one expected the sanctions to prevent anything from happening. It has to show, this is going to take time, and we have to show resolve so he knows what's coming. And so the people of Russia know what he's brought on them. That's what this is all about. This is going to take time. It's not going to occur. He's going to say, oh, my God, these sanctions are coming. I'm going to stand down. 
He's going to test the resolve of the West to see if we stay together, and we will. We will, and it will impose significant costs on him. Will he go beyond Ukraine, sir? Do you see him going beyond Ukraine? Yes. Thank you. Right. Two topics, just really quick. First, markets are down and gas prices are up. I know you always stress the difference between Wall Street and Main Street, but everybody seems to be in for some economic pain. How economically painful is it going to get for people in this country? And I do have one more question. First of all, there's no doubt that when a major nuclear power attacks and invades another country, that the world is going to respond, and markets can respond all over the world. So there's no doubt about that, number one. Number two, the notion that this is going to last for a long time is highly unlikely as long as we continue to stay resolved in imposing the sanctions we're going to impose on Russia, period. What's your next question? I'm sorry. The next question is, did you underestimate Putin? And would you still describe him the way that you did in the summer as a worthy adversary? At the time, he was, I made it clear, as an adversary, and I said he was worthy. I didn't underestimate him. And I've read most of everything he's written. Did you read the, I shouldn't say, I'm not a wise guy. The, you, you heard the speech he made, almost an hour's worth of speech is why he was going into Ukraine. He has much larger ambitions in Ukraine. He wants to, in fact, reestablish the former Soviet Union. That's what this is about. And I think that his, uh, his ambitions uh, are, are completely contrary to the place where the rest of the world has arrived. You're confident that these devastating sanctions are going to be as devastating as Russian missiles and bullets and tanks? Yes, Russian bullets, missiles, and tanks in Ukraine. Yes, I am. Thank you, President Biden. If sanctions cannot stop President Putin, what penalty can? I didn't say sanctions couldn't stop him. You've been talking about the threat of these sanctions for several weeks now. Yes, but the threat of the sanctions and imposing the sanctions and seeing the effect of the sanctions are two different things. They're two different things. And we're now going to, he's going to begin to see the effect of the sanctions. And what will that do? How will that change his mindset here, given he's because attacking Ukraine? Because it will so weaken his speak. country that he'll have to make a very, very difficult choice as to whether to continue to move toward being a second-rate power or, in fact, respond. You said in recent weeks that big nations cannot bluff when it comes to something like this. You recently said that the idea of personally sanctioning President Putin was on the table. Is that a step that you're prepared to take? And if it's not, it's not a bluff. It's on the table. Sanctioning President Putin? Yes. Why not sanction him today, sir? Mr. President. Why not sanction him today, sir? Mr. President, if I can, you detailed some severe and swift new sanctions today and said the impact it will have over time. But given the full scale invasion, given that you're not pursuing uh, disconnecting Russia from what's called SWIFT, the international banking system, or other sanctions at your disposal, Respectfully, sir, what more are you waiting for? Specifically, with the sanctions we've imposed exceed SWIFT. The sanctions we imposed exceed anything that's ever been done. The sanctions we imposed have generated two-thirds of the world joining us. They are profound sanctions. Let's have a conversation in another month or so to see if they're working. Can yes. About, can I ask you about Zelensky? Sir, you spoke to Vladimir Zelensky yesterday, sir. What, what's, the, what's the risk that we are watching the beginning of another Cold War, and is there now a complete rupture in U.S. and Russian relations? There is a complete rupture right now in U.S.-Russian relations if they continue on this path that they're on. And in terms of a Cold War, that depends. You have the vast majority of the rest of the world in total opposition to what he's doing, from Asia to South America to Europe to around the world. And so it's going to be a cold day for Russia. The idea, you don't see a whole lot of people coming to his defense. And are you, are, are you, if I could follow up, sir, are you urging China to help isolate Russia? Are you urging China to help isolate Russia? I'm not prepared to comment on that at the moment. No, no, no. 
He's had his hand up a long time. Thank you, Mr. President. How concerned are you that uh, Putin wants to go beyond Ukraine into other countries and the U.S. will have to get involved if he moves into NATO countries? Well, if he did move into NATO countries, he will be involved. We will be involved. The only thing that I'm convinced of is if we don't stop now, he'll be emboldened. If we don't move against him now with these significant sanctions, he will be emboldened. And Look, you know, every uh, — well, anyway. Can you talk anything more about your conversation? Can you, can you Mr. President, Mr. President? Why not? Why not sanction Putin directly today? I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Sir, India, which is a major defense partner of the United States, is India with fully with you on the issue of Ukraine and Russia? Does the Defense Department of the United States? Sir, India is one of your major defense partners. Is India fully in sync with the United States on on Russia? We're going to be we're in consultation with with India today. We haven't resolved that completely. One more question. Okay. Thank you all very much. Thank you. President uh, Biden in the East Room of the White House talking about the latest in the Western response uh, to the Russian invasion of Ukraine. He talked about cutting off uh, exports from the United States to Russia, talking about freezing Russian assets, talking about imposing new sanctions.